Hey, welcome everybody to Who's Your Band? I am Jeffrey Paul. I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Sean Morton. How are you, Sean? I'm ducky. It feels like it's been a long time since we've done this. I've been, I've been wanting to do this show like for the longest time. It's something we have discussed like a little bit on the air, a little bit off the air. And it was something that's always intrigued me. And then when you go and you do the research, it's it's really a fascinating topic. So it is. since it was basically your idea, why don't you introduce it? So we are, it could be a solo artist, could be a band, it could be anything, uh, where we take the best three album run of a band. It doesn't have to be the first three. It could be three of any, you know, in any chronological. Three in a row three in a row and when you look at it i mean there's tons that are, are bands like i just i'm not into you know like, like the smiths like i'm not a big smiths fan i know you like that kind of that mm. that music I love them. but um there are tons of, of amazing three album runs and uh i'm gonna go on record and say we're gonna probably have two if not three of the same five we're gonna pick five each and i think i'm gonna say at a minimum two probably three okay so why don't we get started with that? Do it. And do you want to go first or would you like me? To yeah, go I'll go first. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go like, this is number five. This is number four. These are all just random. Exactly. Uh, for me, it's mostly rock in this, in this uh, list for me. I didn't, I, I could have went hip hop with one band, which I didn't. I could have went pop. I did. I really kind of stuck to rock with this. And the first one I'm going to go is Black Sabbath. Uh, they, right. <laughs> I told you we're gonna right have off off the freaking bat. Right, let's <laughs> let's talk Sabbath. So you got obviously Black Sabbath is their first. You're, you're right in the same order as I am. I yes, Black Sabbath, then Paranoid, and then Masters of Reality. Uh, Black Sabbath, everybody knows and will agree, is the founders of heavy metal. Some people say, you know, that there's other people that could be, you know. You can say that, but I, there, there's no comparison. This is the, the band that started heavy metal. Uh, for me, if I had to pick one out of those three, I go with Paranoid. Uh, just because I'm I'm more of a fan of that record. But uh, just hearing the, the first intro guitar line of Black Sabbath itself was something that you'd never heard in 1970. And one thing that's really cool, too, is if you look at it, they put these three albums out, I believe, in 16 months. Yes. Which is unheard of in this day and age. It's absolutely well, unheard of. The debut album only took two weeks to record. Yeah. And you got to remember, too, a debut albums. I mean, it's, it's like a, a thing that people always say all the time. They had their whole career to write the first album. But it's the second album if it's really good. Hey, listen, not a bad second album. Let's just be honest. You know, you got you got, you got boar pigs, you got paranoid, you got I mean, fairies wear boots, Iron Man, yep, electric funeral. It's it's a classic record to me. It's their best record. Yeah, I mean, I love I love this. Th I had I had this on my list in the exact same order as you did. Um, it, it's it's fascinating that the first album they come out with is Black Sabbath, and, and the first thing you hear is you know uh, the title track Black Sabbath, which was actually written by uh the bass player Giza butler uh describing a dream he had um mm. and then they took the the title from my thing was a was a boris karloff movie yeah yeah uh but my favorite song out of these three albums is off of master reality children of the grave i think it's you know it, 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 when you talk about shitty fm rock radio when they play sabbath they overplay war pigs they overplay paranoid yep. why don't they play a song like children of the grave there's so many underrated sabbath songs that sabbath fans love i mean because sabbath fans are fanatics you know but there are so many underrated songs just like that that's one of my favorites actually children of the grave is one of my favorite songs of theirs and um i don't know if you ever heard the uh the two tribute albums they put out yeah yeah black one and two i mean right rob uh white zombie does a killer killer version of children of the grave on that uh there's so many national acrobat is a killer song no, great song um into the void i'm just gonna say into the voids on you my know list. They great songs so yeah i agree with you I, mean, I really i hate agreeing with you but they do overplay and it's like everywhere any any classic rock station is going to do the same thing they're going to do it with zeppelin they're going to do it with black sabbath even with the who they're going to do they play the hits but you know the hits aren't always the greatest songs that they put out great 
Yeah. Okay, so let's move on here. And I'm sure this is on your list as well. Let's go Van Halen. Nope. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna Van Halen starting with the debut album, the 78. Mm-hmm. And listen, listen, the first thing you hear is running with the devil, eruption, uh, ain't talking about love, Jamie's crying, atomic punk, and my favorite song on the album, Little Dreamer. I think it's the best song that, that David Lee Roth sings. That is their debut. Right. And then a year later, they come out with Van Halen 2. Uh, Dance in the Night Away, Beautiful Girls, uh, some uh, Somebody Get Me a Doctor. Uh, and then when you don't think they can top that, I love William, uh, Women and Children First, 1980, and year after that, and probably in my top five Van Halen songs and The Cradle Will Rock, mm-hmm. um, another killer song, Everybody Wants Some. Romeo's Delight, Take Your Whiskey Home. I mean, these are three phenomenal albums. I know what the thing is with Van Halen, you can keep going. Sure. You know, it doesn't have to even stop at a three album run. I could have picked it up after uh, Women and Children First and gone uh, Diver Down and, you know, and Fair Warning. And 19, and fair warning. Right, exactly. So, I mean, it's just, it's just insane how good this band is. I, I don't think Van Halen ever came out with a bad album, to be honest. No. With you. Well, the Gary Sharon album is not great. It's not great, but it's not it's not terrible. It's not, hor- it's not horrible. He he, he had a, a shitty situation. He really did because he could have really had that ball and ran with it. But I don't know. And Van Halen is a is on was on my list. I had like twelve that I had picked, and I cut them down. But uh, yeah, I can't disagree with you with that man. That first Van Halen record is is just a a, a monster. It's, it's definitely top 10 greatest debut albums ever, but that's not even a question for me. Um, absolutely. And and I saw them on that tour when they wow. were touring in support of Sabbath. That would have been cool to see. I mean, I was one, but uh, it would have been uh, a lot of fun to go see that, actually. Okay. Who's your <laughs> second pick? Uh, I'm staying with the uh, rock and metal, and I'm going with Metallica's uh, Kill Em All, Ride the Lightning, and Master of Puppets. You can't go wrong with those three. You can't go wrong with those three. I mean, you could go Ride Puppets and Justice. The only reason I didn't pick Justice is because there's no bass on the record. They freely admitted there was no bass on that record at all. They turned it down to one, and it's a shame because it's, it's an amazing record. They do. Uh, there's something on YouTube which is actually pretty cool. Uh, it's this one kid. He's one of those musical savants. He plays the whole uh and justice for all album but he adds bass into it and he does the same thing with the saint anger record he changes out the snare drum to put a real snare drum instead of that tinny shit that he used on that record Mm -hmm. and they're different records they're completely different records when you hear uh the change in the bass and the drums but and listen metallica is the greatest thrash album uh the greatest thrash band that's out there uh you know of the big four kill them all for me uh, is my least favorite of those three, to be honest. Uh, I think Puppets still to this day goes down as the greatest metal record of all time. Uh, it's kind of hard to, to to find something that comes as a good second place to that. Uh, it just it put them into the stratosphere. It really did. And even though like you know, Puppets is a, just a killer, killer record, I prefer some of the songs on Ride the Lightning more than Puppets. Like what? For whom the bell tolls, I think, is a killer song. Uh, Ride the Lightning itself is is a monster. I think it's very, very underrated, that record. If you uh, had to pick one song off of each album, which song would you say is like your go-to song on each of those albums? Shit. Um, if I'm going to go with the first record, uh, that's that's tough, dude. Maybe Motor Breath. Off oh, of you're, going, you're going deep. Yeah, maybe Motor Breath. I like that a lot. Uh, if I'm going with uh, Ride the Lightning, I'm probably going to pick For Whom the Bell Tolls or Creeping Death. I can't. I'd probably go Creeping Death. Both of both equally on, great. On lightning. And then I go with Sanitarium on Puppets or Master. It's hard to. I, I can't pick one. You know, I really can't. I'll, I'll go with Master of Puppets. The, the, the title track off the third one. They're solid fucking records. And these are 40 year old records now. And they're still hit as heavy as they did the first time I heard them. They feel like they've never aged. No, they haven't at all. What's well, uh, what's your next uh, your next three? 
Okay. Well, speaking of age, I'm going to keep uh, going with the classic rock. I'm going to go Queen. Okay. And I'm going to say uh, start with Night at the Opera from 75. And the opening track, Death on Two Legs, is one of my favorite all-time songs from Queen. Uh, You're My Best Friend. Uh, 39, the song that Brian May sings. Uh, Prophet Song, a song that uh, a lot of people don't give a lot of love to, but I think should. Uh, love of My Life, which is uh, just a beautiful song that was shown in the uh, movie. And of course, the epic Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean, that is a, that's like about five, six songs I just mentioned right off the yeah. bat that are just great, great songs. And then they follow that up in 76 with the day at the races. And there you have, it's a little harder, uh, tie your mother down, somebody to love. I mean, it, there's not a, it's such a good song. And then a year later after that news of the world, which is, you know, the rock anthem, uh, we will rock you, you know, going into, we are the champions, uh, spread your wings, which is, to me is almost like a perfect song. It's such a beautiful, mm -hmm. great song that tells a story. I love it. Sheer heart attack is hard. Get down, make love. Another great song. So, I mean, Queen to me, they're a band that when they did it right, there was nobody better. They did have a couple of clunkers. Hot Space was was a mess. Uh, mm -hmm. But these three albums, uh, it really in the middle of their career was just uh, just. Great. I, I probably could have started maybe a day at the rate. You see, you can't leave out night at the opera. If we went four, I could have put jazz yeah, on here as that. well, which is also a great album. See, I I was uh, introduced to Queen very weird. Um, the first song I ever heard by Queen was another one, Bites the Dust. And the reason why I heard that, it was an old wrestler's theme song on TV. So I heard it like in the early 80s. It was a guy named Jimmy Valiant would come out to that song. And I was like, all right, this is a cool song, but I didn't know who it was. And to be honest, it was Wayne's World that really did it for me with with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. It brought a lot of young people into Queen. One and two, and they're they're great. I mean, if you put greatest hits records up against anybody's, those two Queen records are are probably the top three. You know, uh, for me though, an album that I found uh fairly recently, I'd say within the last two years, that I really I love is the game. Oh, that's a great one. Yes. I yes, play yes, that yes. constantly. I play that constantly. And I think one of their most underrated songs is a uh, Sail Away Sweet Sister. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I had always heard um again, me being a Guns N' Roses fanatic, Axel used to do a thing where he would sing uh the chorus of Sail Away Sweet Sister a cappella before they would break into a uh, Sweet Child of Mine, which was always a cool thing. I never knew where it was coming from. Like, I thought it was an actual Guns N' Roses song that he was just doing acapella, like a little snip. And then I wound up going back. And when I heard the song, it just put two and two together. I was like, holy shit, I had no idea that that was actually a Queen song. That's pretty cool that he did that. Um, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because that is a, that's a, that's a Queen album that gets lost a lot. Big time. Big time. Uh, and it's got um, another one bites the dust on it too. Right, right. Which, which, I mean, again, because of, shitty fm radio overplayed and you know, but the song the game is again such a great great song yep oh absolutely you know, it's, that's a killer record it's catchy it was you know i remember it got some play on radio back in the day but i never really thought it got the push it really deserved i i, I agree with you because you know a friend of mine was like hey listen to this album i'm like i don't even have it i didn't even download it you know, I, I, fin I finally downloaded, I was like, wow, this is top to bottom, such a great record. I went on both the vinyl. And you're like a great guitar lead in that song by Brian May. Mm -hmm. On that oh, song. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Sean, what else you got? All right, I can go. I'm, I'm probably going to go what I think is the best three. All right, this is, and you might disagree with me with this, but I'm going to go with Born to Run, Darkness on the Edge of Town, and The River. I didn't put it on my list because I knew you would put it on yours. This, okay. I think this is how the whole thing started with this. When you talked about these three albums and I'm going to try and beat these three, but okay. it's going to be hard. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any more perfect 
three albums in a row than these three. Right. And that's, that's kind of where I went with that. I mean, again, when my introduction to Springsteen and I look, I make age jokes all the time, but you got to remember, I am a little bit younger. And when I started really listening to music, the first record that I got from Springsteen was born in the USA because that was all the hits that were on MTV with dancing in the dark and born in the USA and cover me, cover me. Great, great, great record. It's a great record. But again, another band that I had to go backwards with, and uh, Born to Run, eight songs, and there's seven classics on that song. Jungle Land is the most underrated Springsteen song. And if you go as a purist, people will say that is his best song he's ever written. I don't tend to agree with that. It is a, an, a killer song. Born to Run, the single itself, I've had this uh, issue with. I love it. Again, but very played out, very, very played out. I always say that if you take New Jersey and you have the two greatest songs to ever come out of New Jersey, it's Born to Run and it's Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. And I think that Living on a Prayer is a bigger New Jersey song than Born to Run is. Mm. Uh, I caused a lot. I, I post this like once a year just to see people's reaction. I really do. And people think I'm fucking batshit crazy for saying that. But I think across the board, if you tell somebody like in Somalia, I guarantee you they probably heard Living on a Prayer before they heard Born to Run. You may not remember this, but back in the day of AM, uh, AM FM radio, when FM was king and PLJ was the station, yep. Ka- Carol Miller made a push to try and make Born to Run the national anthem of New Jersey. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, Born to Run from top to bottom is a great song. Uh, I, I think a, an underrated song on the album is Night. Yep. Um, it, 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 it's a great driving song. It's fun. I think out of these three, my favorite song comes off of Darkness. I love Prove It All Night. Uh, oh, I, and I'll go down. My favorites too. And I'll go down a rabbit hole. And my favorite version of it is a concert he did in, uh, I think it was Tempe, Arizona. Uh, in 1978 and he does this beautiful prelude to it and if you listen to it it sounds like the prelude to um uh because the night a song that he gave okay Smith, but it's just a beautiful beautiful in, um uh, uh instrumental with uh roy bitten and danny Frederici uh exchanging piano licks then springsteen comes in uh by playing a guitar and i mean the whole build-up of it is about four minutes before it breaks into because the night so you got to hang in there a little bit but it, it's totally worth the trip it's great yeah for me i mean i'd say that that born to run and darkness are two perfect records and the only reason i don't say the river is a perfect record is because it's a double record and there's right. a couple songs on there that you could throw away but there are some amazing amazing songs on the river my favorite spring one of my favorite spring scene songs is out in the street Oh, great that's, song. That's yeah. one of those songs that I, I always describe as if, you, if I'm in a bad mood, if I'm in a bad mood, I get in my car, I start driving. It's the first song I put on. It brings you out of a bad mood no matter what. Have you ever seen him in, in, in concert in live? About, about 12 times, yeah. Okay. So you know what the, the arena is like when he gets into that. Oh, yeah. And I've, I've seen some shows where... You know, he was just absolutely magical. And, I, you know, you have some of those experiences where, like, you're only going to experience it in that moment and you're never going to experience it again. There was one time at Giant Stadium, back when it was Giant Stadium, he was playing and it was right during the Rising Tour. So it was about 2002, no, about 2003, 2004. And he's playing a song called Mary's Place, mm-hmm. which is a good song. The chorus is Let It Rain. You know, he keeps saying Let It Rain, Let It Rain. It's the pre-chorus. It was downpouring. It was absolutely downpouring and he just keeps going, let it rain for about three and a half minutes until they just go into this big monstrous drum crash onto the, onto the cymbals. And as they crash, boom, thunder and lightning hit at the same exact time. It was an amazing experience, but yeah, I can't. Pretty cool. It, it, there's only a couple stinkers on, on the river, only a couple, but I think some of his best stuff is on there. Uh, uh, stolen, car, stolen Cars underrated song too. You know, I'm a rocker is a great driving song as well. Uh, Two Hearts is awesome. Great song. Hungry Heart. Again, maybe a little played out, too, because that was only his only top 40 hit at the time, too. I don't know if you knew that or not. At that point? 
Yeah, this is only top forty yet. No, I didn't know. That. I, I would th- I would have thought something off of Born to Run would have. Uh, no, the album went number one, but I never had a top forty hit with it. Thunder Road. Never made top forty. I don't believe so. I think the first number uh, the first. No, I'm, I'm sorry, not top forty. Uh, number one hit. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, number that, one. That, that I could, could say. Well, no, that was also also that was really out of everything leading up to this. You know, this album that was the, really the most commercial song I think he had ever put out at that oh, time. Oh, sure. And he did that for uh, Manfred Mann, too, right? That was pers- the, the band who played it first? What, Hungry Heart? Yeah. No. He, he wrote that for somebody. Uh, the Hungry Heart, I thought, was always his own song. Manfred yeah. Mann, he wrote Blinded by the Light for That's what I'm thinking of. Okay, but he wrote Hungry He Hungry Heart was covered by somebody, too. I just can't remember who it was. I've never heard another anyone else cover that song. Uh, the Ramones, actually. Sorry. They covered Hungry Heart? I, I believe so, yeah. I've never, I've never heard it. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. He wrote the song. I didn't do any weed gummies yet. I'm just letting you know this. Um, he wrote the song for the Ramones. Really? And, then they, and they never I don't recorded see this it. this being like a simple three power chord song. Yeah. He wrote it for the Ramones and Joey played it and said, I'm not feeling it in our style. You got to keep it for yourself. And that's and made that the right trip. And is it also, a, again, a better story song than The River? No, not at all. It's just a, a simply a gorgeous song. Oh yeah, dude. It, it's listen. You can't go wrong with late seven, mid to late seventies or Springsteen. You can't go. You cannot go wrong with no, that. No man, he, that's when he was a poet. That's when he was Dylan. Yeah, bingo, hundred yeah. percent. But well, I will gonna, tell you, his last album that he put out, Letters to You, is the best album he's done since those three. Since those three. Since those three, no question, it's the best album that he's done in thirty years, probably. <laughs> Hmm. And it's one thing that's cool about that too is on that new record, he has three songs that are 40 years old that he just recorded for the first time. He demoed them for a long time, but he actually recorded them for the first time. Trying to think. I mean, I I thought Lucky Town was pretty good, but yeah. It's not with the E Street. That's a solo record. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Human Touch and Lucky Town were solo records, but yeah. I mean, as far as an, an E Street band record, it's definitely their best one. And the documentary that goes along with it is just mind blowing. I'd like, to, well, I like it better than what was it? Western stars. Uh, that was okay. That was just okay. It's a decent, but this, he has one song on that album ghosts, which to me is the best song that he's done in 40 years by far. And then he has something almost, I think it's a religious song or something on it. There's a couple. There's two. Yeah. That, 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 I, that I really liked off of it. All right. What do you got, what do you got next? Um, well, my favorite band, Iron Maiden. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to, this is kind of interesting because Iron Maiden, a couple of inceptions, and we'll start with Iron Maiden Killers uh, in 81 with uh, Paul Diano. And they were a different band. Oh, God, uh, yeah. At, at that point. I mean, they're heavy, but they're not what they ultimately become. They're all, because Paul Diano kind of gave them like a, almost like a, a punky, uh, almost like a Sex Pistols type of 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 a vibe about them. Um, the okay. song itself, Killers, uh, Wrathchild, which they wound up doing later on in their sets. That's with, my favorite with, song on that record too. It, it's a great one. Uh, Murderers in the Room was was great, and then the the title itself, uh, Killers, was was great. So um, yeah, so after that, they wind up. Uh, replacing a singer and you're like do you remember back in the day when you replaced a singer that was like man that was done it was a big deal like it just wasn't done and then you bring out this guy bruce dickerson who can fucking sing the song like the 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 phone book and make it sound incredible and so 82's number of the beast is a different sound and it has Easily in my top three songs of all time of any genre, uh, "Hallowed Be Thy Name" mm-hmm. is to, to me the my I, 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 it's never gotten boring for me. If I if I had to only listen to one song for the rest of my life, that probably would be it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I love "Hallowed Be Thy Name," "Run to the Hills," Twenty Two Acacia Avenue," uh, "Children of the Damned." You know. These are all great. And the title songs. track too, Number of the Beast. And Number of the Beast is a good one too. Yeah. So I just think 
uh, when you have those two back to back and then you follow it up in 83 with Peace of Mind, which is also, oh my God, I remember when this album came out, how much I loved it. And when I just saw them in concert, like these songs still, still a great live flight of Icarus, um, revelations. And you want to see a crowd go crazy, you know, when the way Bruce gets them off at the, at the beginning, uh, where Eagles Dare, the trooper, I mean, it's su- it's such a heavy, great out. I think the one thing about Maiden Men is they don't have any ballads. You know, there's no, no bathroom song. You know, everything is good. Everything is heavy. I, you know, my, that's what right, my favorite band. Uh, we could keep going with them, but if we're going three albums, let's go: Killers, Number of the Beast, and Peace of Mind. Uh, I can't argue with that. I, I had twelve. I had twelve artist lined out and iron maiden was on there too and it was actually the same three records too <laughs> there you go. like but i cut it off i cut it off my list i, I think uh, i don't think you're gonna have this one for me um i'm gonna go and say this is the second best three records in a row and it's the first three of this band i think i know what it is i think it's on my list well there's two of them that i'm doing with this okay so if you want me to go with the one that i think that you have on your list no, do, 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 no, no no i'm gonna see if i'm gonna see if we have this little uh symbiotic thing going on here jeff i'm gonna go with rage against the machine that is not it okay i'm gonna go with pearl jam so <laughs> here's <laughs> It is not you're not going with Pearl Jam. I know you you hate Pearl Jam. I actually have Pearl Jam on the list. Yes. You cannot possibly. I, I do. The first three records from Pearl Jam, I think, are not only their three best records, but the t- the first two records are the two best grunge uh, records. Two of the two agree. best grunge records. Uh, uh, 100%. Totally agree. Uh 10 is phenomenal, yeah. but I had I didn't put them on the list because I couldn't come up with the third. Yeah, I think it goes 10, then Versus, then Vitology. Vitology put out a lot of great songs on that yeah, record. I don't know, man. man. That's when I, I like, I, what I like of Pro Jam, I really like. And then after a while, it becomes a too much. You program. have fanatics who love, every, I have friends who like, we're all going to see Pearl Jam in September, right? So these people are fanatics. They're fan club members. They go to every show. It's like, it, it's ridiculous. They love everything. I am the first person to admit Pearl Jam put out a lot of shit. Okay. In the early 2000s, they put out like three or four records in a row that were hot garbage. Okay. But these three records, I mean, 10 by Pearl Jam is a, for me, a top five debut record. Uh, it's, I mean, it's up there. between it's up there. there's not a bad song on the record. There is not one single bad song on the record. Uh, Release is one of the greatest rock songs that was ever written. I don't know if you're ever a fan of that song or not, but I mean, if you don't hear that live and you're not crying when you hear this song, you're not listening to the song properly. It's just a great song. Uh, And they have the hits like Jeremy and Black and stuff like that. But even flow. Even flow, they and but you know, alive was the first single. Yeah, yeah. When I, I and when I that heard one. that, man, Great I was song. like, "Holy shit! This this is a this is a good freaking band." I'll never. I was away on a retreat, like a, a a day retreat in high school, and this kid came up to me. and goes, "Do I know you're a big rock fan? I made a copy of this." listen to this and if you like it make yourself a copy and give it back to me and i did it was a tape and i was like holy shit this band is amazing and then you know versus has animal daughter uh dissident Love animal yeah 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 That's uh, good. rear view mirror elderly woman behind the counter i mean that is a, such a, an amazing follow-up record to 10 it really is. And then you got yeah. Vitology that has a lot of great songs on there, too. It's got uh, Not For You, which is the first single. That's a good song. Yeah, yeah. Nothing Man, uh, Corduroy, which is a great yeah. song. Better Man, which is one of yeah, their Better biggest, Man was probably a their one. biggest song, I would think. It might be their biggest song they ever did. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I would think the songs off of 10 were bigger. Um, I think I mean, Jeremy more... was just like, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the video as well. Yeah, I think Better Man it might be their biggest because that was their biggest radio hit. Mm. Like that was a number one rock radio hit. But uh, yeah, for me, those three albums in a row are absolutely killer. And then like, you know, after after Vitology, it, it really does kind of just slide downhill. You got the um, No Code record and then it has like one or two good songs. Yield has one or two. I'm not an uber diehard fan, but I do appreciate when a band puts out good music and those three from top to bottom for me are just you know right there. 
that's a that's a good three. You you're right about that. That is a good three. I want to hear what you got next. Um, hmm. There's a lot of different directions I can go, but I'm sticking with classic rock because I think okay. I think the '70s are the best era of music, uh, and so I'm going to stick with that era, and I'm going to go with Pink Floyd, and okay. I'm going to go uh, Dark Side of the Moon, 1973. I mean. Besides the concept, and everyone knows about how long the album charted for on the on the Billboard charts. When Billboard charts actually meant something, right? But I used so, to buy a magazine every goddamn week. You did? Oh God, yeah! For years and years, I would buy Billboard every week and just read the charts and study the charts and see how much they were going up and going down. And oh yeah, dude, that was a, I was such a nerd. So, so did I be, be, that was, it was that, I forgot the, some of the other publications, but when I owned a record store, that's what I would do. And every week I'd pull out that top a uh, hundred uh, chart and I would put it on the, um, on a display in my store. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was dark side of the moon. I had breathe time, money, us and them brain damage eclipse. I mean, it's, it's, it's considered their masterpiece. Yeah. But my favorite favorite album of Pink Floyd is the album that came out two years later, Wish You Were Here. Here it's my favorite, too. There's not a bad song on it. It's no. an easy listen. Shine on your crazy diamond. Uh, Welcome to the machine. Have a cigar. Uh, the title song, which opens and closes the album. Uh, just, just sick. I mean, you. Just, I mean, again, f- phenomenal i love pink floyd and then animals came out in 77 which is an uh roger waters commentary on society and he breaks it down to three uh, types of animals that people basically turn into pigs dogs and sheep and you know pigs on the wing is a song that you know if it got you know that was a song that got radio airplay a lot of the songs are long they're not catchy but when you listen to what he's talking about it it's almost orwellian you know so i really think these are these are three very different albums and just just unbelievably brilliant and what makes it crazier that these albums were written before they were 30 Right. And and the fact that Sick. all the medication they were on when they were writing these records, too. That's fine. That. That's fine. Because, you know, Roger Waters is still doing it and Gilmore is still doing it. And they're they're just absolutely brilliant. I, again, I always say McCartney and Lennon are the Mozart and Beethoven of their day. These guys aren't far behind. Yeah. And they have such a cult following, too. I mean, you know, when you hear Pink Floyd fans are just fucking fanatics. They're absolutely, and I don't like the early stuff. No, neither do I. The, but they also I, change. They yo, change. Oh, huge, lot. huge. Like the, the, Piper, the Pipers in the, in the fucking closet with the, with the, with the Focaccia. I don't like whatever, the metal. Whatever the hell that's called. Yeah. Yeah. And my last one, I, I mentioned it, but I, I really thought you would have it was Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> You know, I mean, the debut is great. Yeah. Um, the one with the uh, the Empire. Yeah, it's is Rage Against the Machine, Evil Empire, Evil the Empire. Battle of, and the Battle of Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, they're all great. Holy shit. Yeah. All, I mean, all, so, Ra- you know, the first album, obviously, everybody knows the first album. Uh, Bomb Track, Killing in the Name, uh, Freedom. But my favorite is Know Your Enemy, hands down. I think that's one of their best songs by far. I learned how to play that on the guitar very early on. Love it. Uh, you go Evil Empire, and that's when they really broke out into the into the commercial rock radio. They had some they had some steam with the first record. The second one was really what really busted yeah. them out with uh, People of the Sun. Great song, uh, Bulls on Parade. That was that was the big uh, MTV song. Yeah, and then uh, Down Rodeo, which is an, another killer killer track from them. Is too. Testify on that, or is it on the next one? Testify is on the third record. Okay, that's, Los my, that's my favorite song. And they have Testify, Gorilla Radio, Come Like Love, Bomb, Gorilla Radio, Sleep oh. Now in the Sleep Now in the Fire. I mean, come on, yeah, that's another great one. Great, yeah. three great records, top to bottom. I'm not a huge fan of the Renegades album, which is like all the covers. It's a lot of covers. It's all covers, but it's good. Yeah. It's good. It's good. But like, I, I think that's one of those records where it was kind of like, uh, all right, we get where we know we're done as a band. Um, so let me, let me ask you this, Sean. Should they be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? 
No. Why? Because they don't have enough uh, material? Well, no. Sex Pistols have one album and they're in the freaking Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Should the Sex I mean? Pistols be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? No, I don't think so either. I really don't. I Is mean, it just I, a cool t shirt and a great name. Bingo. Thank you. That's one of those things. Yes, absolutely. They didn't change a genre, they were just like very controversial. They have, right. Like, like, right. There's two good songs on that record. You know what I mean? Right. There's only two good songs, but yeah, I don't, they're okay. I don't know. They're okay. I wouldn't even say they're good songs. They're okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know that Rage deserves to be in, you know. I mean, does Public Enemy deserve to be in ahead of Rage Against the Machine? Well, you know my feeling on this. It's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I know. It's it's shitty, but I, I do think at some point they will go in. I do think they will go in. Um, And maybe, it's not going to be this year, obviously, but maybe next year they'll go in. Because there's a lot of people that are on that border right now that deserve to go in, you know. And Tom Morello is kind of like big with uh, with the hall itself. He's very big, and like you know, he just put out uh, two solo records in a year, which I don't know if you heard. Uh, they, he does a version of "Highway to Hell" with Bruce Springsteen and Eddie Vedder singing it. That's pretty cool. I'll send it to you after the show. It's a great, great version. It's it's just it's down a little bit, and uh, you know, to accommodate Bruce's voice and shit. But great, great record. Yeah, I mean, I, I <sighs> it was a toss up for this between this and a trap call quest. So I'm glad you went with this. Yes, because I know you're not a hip hop fan. Uh, even I though like some hip hop, I'm not, I'm not tri- a drive I'm record sure. is. Uh, but I'm not going to put the fucking tribe called Quest and compare it to Rage Against Machine. I don't think there's any comparison. No, no, I don't <laughs> I think mean, so. Either. You just made a great argument on why why uh, Rage Against the Machine's top three albums are great, and that's why they're borderline. It's borderline. You know, but that's the thing. Like Nine Inch Nails, the borderline the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, just based on their first three albums. Yeah, I mean, Nine Inch Nails was kind of in the same kind of boat too. I mean, they were they were a different sound, and that's the thing I loved about Rage is you didn't hear anything like them in the least bit. Nine Inch Nails was the same way, and that whole '90s period, everybody just clumps in with like grunge. There's some amazing bands that came out that put out different music that didn't sound like anything. Like I love Matchbox Twenty. That's a band that I've always loved since the album first came out. Their first album, Yourself or Someone Like You, to me, is a the perfect record. And they're just a simple pop rock band. That they kind of got mixed in with like um, Third Eye Blind. And yes, but these all guys were really talented. These guys were talented. Yeah. Rob Thomas, to me, great singer. Uh, is not just a great singer. He's one of the best songwriters of my generation. Yeah, Matchbox 20 is around the same era when they came out. That's what I just fucking said. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Matchbox 20. Oh, I'm not talking about Matchbox 20. Uh, what's that? Maroon 5. Maroon 5. They, you know, They're okay. uh, like all these bands kind of like kind of like seem to be the same. Yeah, like Maroon 5 tricked me. They completely tricked me. With their first album. Their first album, their first song was Harder to Breathe. And, you, and that's got a chunky guitar riff. It's got a great vocal line. I'm like, wow, this is a cool new rock band I can get behind. And then you start hearing like This Love. And I'm like, oh, they're a pop band. And I now that was a bad song. I liked it. This Love's a good song, but that that's a band, dude, that really has changed their sound drastically. Even their second album was pretty good. They had a, a song. Uh, uh, oh, it was a good video, too. I hate you so much. Uh, what was that? Come on, help me out with this dumb song. I'd have to look it up. Hold on, let me see. Uh, won't uh, something? I, I forgot what. I mean, my wife loved it. <laughs> Maroon Five is a good band. Like th- that's one of those bands that, like, you know, like your chick loves. Like your chick loves them, and like you go see them, and like you're like, all right, you know, yeah, yeah. Like you have to go to a concert songs. with your wife, and you know, right. it's like, okay, I could sit through this. Uh, let's see. Uh, I never want to leave. I never no. want to leave this bed. No. Uh, make no. you wake up call. No. I, that, that's, if I never see your face again. No. Okay, then I don't know what it is. Let me. See. Won't uh, go home without you. Won't go home without you. That That's was a it. Killer song. Yeah, she loved that song. That's a killer, killer. I, I mean, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not opposed to them. I'm really not opposed to them at all. But uh, not my cup of tea. <laughs> not my cup of tea. What's your What's your last three? Uh, uh, I wanted to. Let's keep going with this a little bit because I have a couple okay. that we haven't gotten to uh, that I think are so cool. I love this topic. Um, how can we talk about this without talking about the? Beatles. All right. They wanted to put the Beatles in there. 
I did. I yeah. want to put the Beatles. But again, this is one of those things. I could have put four different threes in a row. Well, that's why I wanted to ask you. Where would you have gone? Where would you have started with the Beatles? God. I think it's, I think the three is what? Rubber Soul, Revolver, and Sergeant Pepper? Is that the three? You fucking nailed it. Yeah, I think Sean that's the three. I think Moore. that's the three that I would have picked. Yes. Even yes. though the White Album is my favorite by far. White Album is my favorite record from them by far, but you cannot, you cannot put those three I mean, against I, anything, really. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Rubber Soul, 65, Drive My Car, uh, You Won't See Me, In My Life. I'm looking through you. Um, all just such great songs. Then f- next year they come out with Revolver, Eleanor Rigby. Uh, yeah. And you, okay. And that's enough. But then you got Good Day Sunshine here, there, everywhere. Got to get you into my life. And then there was, I think, in between, not an, uh, it came out with an album, but it wasn't an album of original material. It was almost like a greatest hits. And then the next, you know, the next year they came out with uh, Sgt. Pepper with a little help from my friends, the title song, She's Leaving Home, A Day in the Life, which is just, you know, a, a production classic. Um, it, it, I mean, the, the Beatles, you could just put their whole catalog, pick any three, throw a dot in the wind, and, you know, you, any three albums you pick from the Beatles in a row is going to be it's better tough. than anybody else's. It is definitely tough, Yeah. Man. I mean, Radiohead is another band that you can put on there too, even though I'm not no, a you super, can't. No, I'm not a can't. super. No, I'm not a super band. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a super big fan of them, you know. But you can't deny it. You got the Stones. We didn't even talk about the Stones either. You got Let It Bleed, Sticky Fingers, and Exile on Main Street. Uh, hold on, I have, I have that written down here somewhere. Where did I put my my list here with the Stones? I. I think we're somewhere in the right ballpark. Stones, what'd you say? What were your first th- three? Stones, I would say you do Let It Bleed, Sticky Fingers, and Exile on Main Street. Bingo. I have the same thing on my little list here. Yeah, that, that's a solid three. I mean, look at bands like U2. You know, U2 put out, there's there's a couple, right? I think there's two or three you can do with three in a row, but I would go like Under the Blood Red Sky, Unforgettable Fire, and Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree is their greatest is their greatest record by far. It's not they're yeah. never gonna put a, a record out better than that. Um but you also could have started at the beginning or you could have started with uh war, okay, and then gone the three, you know, the three consecutive, you know, uh there. You know, I, again, I, I don't like a lot of hip hop. Um, I appreciate a lot of it, but I don't, I will never just go out and listen to it. But like Outcast is an amazing band that put out three monster records in a row too. I mean, you have Equimini, Stankonia and Speaker Box, which was the double album. That was the album that blew them up and it was their last album. Our producer Adam loves Outcast. He he forced us. Uh, Adam is a that. good person. That's why Adam is a good person. But again, I, I originally I want to put Tribe Called Quest on there. For me, I think they are the most underrated hip hop band of all time, and I think that they're one of the most influential hip hop bands without question. And they were just actually nominated for the Hall of Fame too, which I love. They're never going to get in. They are mm-hmm. never getting in. Why? But, um, just not enough mainstream popularity, I think, even though they were they were gigantic. I think there was a lot of people that were bigger that came after them, like Eminem and Jay-Z. And but doesn't the whole tribe like to be like smarter than everybody else and say, Hey man, we'll we'll tell you what to listen to. What do you mean? The rock the rock fame, you mean? Or or tribe. Yes. Um, listen, it, we we know me and you don't agree on a lot of things. We do agree that the rock and roll hall of fame is a piece of shit. Yes. And it's a gigantic, <laughs> flaming, stinking, disgusting, large piece of shit. Um, I do love what Dolly Parton did this year. So do and I. They, and they went against her wishes. They refused to remove her from the ballot. Adam could back me up on this, but all I know is that Pat Benatar bet again in this year. She's getting in this year. There's no question she's getting in this year. She has There's to get always in. somebody who the year before is pushed back into the limelight for some reason. And it was kind of like with Joan Jett. Joan Jett was in the Rock Roll Hall of Fame until she played with Nirvana at their induction. Then all of a sudden they were like, how the fuck is Joan Jett not in the Rock Roll Hall of Fame? And then the next year she was. Pat Benatar should have been before Joan Jett. I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree with you. I mean, I, we, again, I love busting your balls, but then you can't 
when when the facts are in front of you, you can't deny it. I really because I mean, she. I know that she was in the Runaways the same time Pat Benatar, you know, was was mm-hmm. making records and being doing hit records, but right. she was like, you know, Pat Benatar. Who tell, tell me a singer, a female singer who was a solo artist. Okay. Who was a rocker before Pat Benatar? Janis Joplin. She, well, she was more of a folk singer, would you say? No, she was a rock singer. I I, I see her as a rock singer. Um, I think of like I'm almost like a rock soul singer. Pat Benatar. When you look at songs like um, when you think of songs like uh, "Hells for Children" and "Fire and Ice," and, you know, I mean, she's just. She, you know, she was like, a, 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 she would, she toured with like the Scorpions. Did you she know? really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. She, I mean, she was, she was like a, a rocker. She was a rock chick, you know, and she made, I mean, I, she made it cool for, for, for girls to go out there and be, you know, like do heavy metal music, heavy, I could say it's heavy metal, yeah. hard rock. Let's call it hard rock. Okay. okay? I mean, the only people I can think of, yeah, I think Adam just texted us and said that uh, she's number three in the fan voting right now. Adam, who's number one in the fan? Because I'm sure it's something like shitty. It's Duran Duran. Yeah, you're correct. It's shitty. They are not shitty. They they're good. Uh, No, four songs and that's it. Really? I think only four. Reflex. Shut up. You don't like the reflex? And I don't like the. I used to when I was a kid, and then when you rehear, save a prayer. Uh, I like, uh, I'll tell you my favorite Duran Duran song is Ordinary World off the wedding album. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. That's great... come undone. Yeah, which, uh, I mean, I have so many covers of that song. It's one of the most, it's one of the most covered rock songs. But Come Undone? Come Undone, yeah. I have like four or five different versions that are just unbelievable. I think the only, I mean, and she's not really a rock singer, but I mean, if you go back to the Pat Benatar thing, I think the only person, female singer, solo, that can compare with the amount of hits that Pat Benatar had be Linda Ronstadt. Uh, but she, again, she's, she's a folk rock. She, well, she, she's so many different genres. Right. She, did she win a Grammy for Spanish music? I think so. She did a Spanish record in the eighties, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then she did, um, I remember she did a, a couple of albums with the Nelson Riddle band that really? were like American standards, like, you know, a big orchestra and she got dressed up in a gown and did all that. And then you look at her, her early, like, you know, 60s and 70s stuff, stuff what she did with, a, what was it? Was the group called the Stone Pony? Don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, with songs like a different drum. She sang that uh, as part of a band before she went solo. So, I mean, she was just so many different incarnations of Linda Ronstadt. Oh, yeah. But Stevie Nicks is still far superior to Pat Benatar. As far Not as even close. Singer. It's not even how, how, how they can put Stevie Nixon as a solo artist over Pat Benatar is a fucking crime. And it's the reason why I hate the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I really want I'm, I have I have put out no less than 10 emails to different people trying and begging to get Pat Benatar on this show. Don't build up my hope, Sean. I have been trying for literally a year. For literally a year, since now I am the person who was getting all the guests. Anyway, so yeah, I, I have been really trying to do this. I, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen at some point. I'm telling you right now. I hope you do. I'm telling you. Was that? Did you finish your list? No, I got. I got, I got another one. You got another? What's your last one? Um, let me. I want to go two more. Okay. Okay. Um, because I because I just don't want to leave any of these bands out. Uh, right. And maybe you have this on one of your lists as well. The Cars. Do you like The Cars? Yeah. I think yeah. when you look at The Cars debut album in 78, also talk about, everyone says The Cars debut album is their greatest hits. Let the Good Times Roll, yeah. Best Friends Girl, uh, 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 You're All I've Got Tonight, Moving in Stereo. Uh, man, great album, followed up by Candio in 79, the Dangerous Type, which may be my favorite song that they've done. Since I Held You is another great song. Uh, Let's Go. Uh, got a lot of my head, which was like a really great, almost like a punky new wave-ish song. And then they changed their sound a little bit uh, in 1980 with Panorama with songs like Touch and Go and Don't uh, Tell Me No. And they're very, very reminiscent of the time. Uh, very synth. Um, 
uh, heavy songs. But I mean, the cause also a band that I'm glad they're on the Rock and Hall of Fame. And I just think they never came out with a bad album. They're very underrated. They're very, you don't understand, like, they're one of those bands that influence people on every level, like pop bands, rock bands, alternative bands. You know, they, they were such a huge, huge influence on so many people. Uh, I think, you know, I'm a huge covers person. Like Smashing Pumpkins did a, a killer version of You're All I Got Tonight, which I don't know if you've ever heard. Again, I don't, I haven't heard killer it. version, a little he- much heavier than the original version. But yeah, you hear a lot of the Cars music and, and tons of, we just said it, Matchbox 20 and Maroon 5 and Third Eye Blind and, you know, Hootie the Blowfish, like all these bands you can hear the Cars pop influence on. And then once you get into like the, the mid 80s, they got very poppy with like, you know, Magic and uh, you might think and stuff like that. And that's when they kind of broke out. But if you really look well, it was all, that was all also very heavy MTV. Of course it was MTV, you know, and Drive, you know, which is no, a, that's a, still a, a phenomenal song. song. Beautiful song. And, uh, you know, I have a couple of cover versions of that too. Deftones do a great version of that. And uh, 6 a.m. Nikki Six does a great version of that too. Which is great heavy. about that. So- what was great about the cause in general was you had two lead singers. Um, yeah, Rick Ocasek and Benjamin Orr, and they would write songs for each other as well. Okay. Um, but Drive could be the car's best song because okay. it's, it's such a haunting song. It's a, you know, and if you watch the video, it's um, Rick Ocasek's wife who plays the girl in the asylum. That's Paulina Polakova or Poroskova, whatever. Yeah. Stuttering, mumbling prick. I'm going to tell love, you. You love it, when I pronounce like, like oh, these European it, names. It's just great. It just does wonders for my soul. So <laughs> if I'm going to pick an extra one, since you're going to pick one more, I think that's, and I, it just popped into my head how By I. By the way, there's one band, there's one band that I'm shocked that you haven't brought up, as so I hope this is it. Okay. No, it's not. It's in a solo artist. No, then. Um, Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you go thriller, bad, and dangerous. I think I thought you were going to go before the album before Thriller. No, I'm not a huge fan of the wall. wall. I'm not a huge fan of that. Great album. It's a good record. If it's a good record, I mean, you could, you, all right, look, you could go off the wall, Thriller and Bad, but I go Thriller, Bad, Dangerous. Dangerous had some great songs, and Bad had like, I think, eight top 10 singles. It's fu- it's it's a it's a monster album, but it gets un- it gets kind of bad. Right? Yeah. I mean, look, look at look at the two songs that we probably both love the most: "Dirty Diana" and "Smooth Criminal." "Dirty Diana" and, is my favorite Michael Jackson song, hands down. It, it's it's great, and those weren't even the biggest hits off that. No, album. not even close. Uh, "Thriller" again. It's still the, considered the greatest record of all time. I mean, do I think it's the greatest record of all time? It's at the time, man. It's it, up there. I mean, what, it's up think, there yeah. think about the two singles that were just like, is there an album that produced two bigger singles than Billie Jean and uh, Beat It? Yeah, I'm sure. Iconic singles like that. You, you can you can put a, te- yeah, you can say it about a bunch of records. You know what I mean? But, but I mean, I, at the time, I can't think of two songs that were bigger. You could say "Smells Like Teen Spirit" and "Come As You Are" or "Lithium." Big, big songs, not bigger than. Uh, I don't think they're as big as Michael Jackson, but um, even Madonna's on, on. You know, like oh, that was that was the one who I was thinking about, but I I, I just think she falls like a notch below. Like when you think about artists that dominated the eighties, I mean, I think you took Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, Madonna, not in that order, but you know, I don't uh, think you put Lionel Richie Club. anywhere. I don't think you put Lionel Richie or Culture Club anywhere near those three. Mm. No, I I'm think a Chameleon you, was a if, huge song. If you go the 80s, I think, I think you go Michael Jackson, you go Madonna. I think you go Guns N' Roses, Def Cindy Lauper, Def Leppard, and Cindy Lauper. I would say those five are probably the, the, the five biggest. That, or, or you got but you two in there too. You two was a monster in the 80s too. They were. It's tough, man. It, it's tough to narrow these things down because, like, you know, you can you can have fights for or against any of these lists. You know, and a lot of it's personal shit too, because you may have a personal, you know, affinity towards one thing too. You know, like I have I got Mariah Carey's picture staring right in front of me. You go in the 90s, is there a bigger artist in the 90s than Mariah Carey? Yes. No, there isn't. 
in the nineties and two thousands, she's the biggest artist out there. I don't, I do not get your affinity with Mariah Carey. She sings a great pop song. Um, she writes most of her stuff too, which I think is really interesting. She has a seven octave range and she has a great, great Heine. That would make a, someone a great singer. Yeah. Well, it's got to come from somewhere. You're right. So who's this artist that, that, that you're, you have your, th- oh, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Michael okay. Jackson. Well, what was the one you thought I was going to say? I thought for sure you were going to say Bon Jovi. No, I would not say Bon Jovi. At I thought you. I really thought you were going to go slippery and wet, New Jersey, keep the faith. It's a great one. It's a great three. It's a great three. But I mean, I, I honestly didn't even think of it. All right. Let me close on these three on these three oh, hours. I'm okay. so interested in this. Go ahead. No, no, it's it's nothing controversial. I mean, I, okay. it, again, if we're talking great bands, how do we leave off Led Zeppelin? And, yeah. how do, and how do we not talk Zeppelin one, Zeppelin two and Zeppelin three? I you wouldn't know? even do those three. <laughs> wow. OK, look at Zeppelin one. Debut album, Good Times, Bad Times. My favorite blues song that they do, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. I know they ripped it off, okay? <laughs> I know they did. I've heard the original, but still, it's 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 great. Dazed and Confused, uh, Communication Breakdown. And then in the same year, they come out with Zeppelin II, Whole lot of Love, uh, Why Doesn't sh- Why Should Never Be, which is phenomenal, uh, especially the stops and starts in that uh, song. Heartbreaker. Uh, man, uh, ramble on, uh, and then Zeppelin three immigrant songs since I've been loving you celebration day. I mean, three, three great, great classics. See, I go a different route. I go a different route. I go Zeppelin four houses of the holy and physical graffiti. That's pretty good too. You know, I mean, you can't you can't deny that. Um, no, no, come on, come on. Zeppelin. Zeppelin four. You have Black Dog. You have Rock and Roll. I Stay fucking away. despise Stairway How to Heaven. I hate Stairway to Heaven. It's so. I mean, if you tell me what is the most overplayed song in the history of music, it's Stairway to Heaven. By I, far, I, I still love it. Ugh, it's so gross. It, to me, it's just, I, I feel dirty when I hear it now. It's just so overplayed. Uh, House of the Holy, Over the Hills and Far Away, Dancing Days, Jamaica, No, no Quarter. I mean, fucking great songs. Oh, no got, Quarter. And then you got the double album of Physical Graffiti. You know, you got uh, Cashmere. Cashmere, which, you know, they say is their favorite song that they ever wrote. And if you listen to it, let me tell you, as a guitar player, right? That is one of the hardest songs to play. You stretch your hands like from the third fret to the eighth, seventh or eighth fret. I mean, you have to have monstrous hands to play that song. Did you ever see the video of Jimmy Page teaching the edge and Jack White how to play that song? Oh, yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's a great movie. Have you seen it? No, I've I've just watched clips. I've I've watched a lot of clips from it. it. So it's called It Might Get Loud. The movie and it opens up with Jack White just taking a board. It's just a, a two by four. And he takes four nails and hammers four nails on the top, two on the top, two on the bottom, hammers a pickup in, right? Puts two strings on there and then plugs it into an amp. And he's playing with a slide off of a fucking two by four. And he just goes, don't need a guitar to play guitar. And that's how the, and that's how it just starts. And it just it's a it's an amazing movie. I, I must have seen it 20 times. You got to check this out because, again, that's where that clip comes from. It's all three of them. Like you see how Jack White is so bare bones and how uh, Jimmy Page has his whole complete setup in a different way. And then and then uh, the edge comes out and he's like one of those technical wizards when it comes to guitar playing. He has more effects than you can even imagine to get some of those sounds that he comes Page out. Page looks like Mozart in that. <laughs> he does, right? He looks like somebody who should be on a friggin' on a, on a piece of currency. <laughs> You know, big white hair and the long coat. Oh, and, you gross. know, but when he just plays and he starts talking about cashmere and how it, it was really the riff of it was the back end of a, of a song that he was working yeah. on, and then kind of switches it around so it so it becomes like the the the, the lead and it becomes like kind of like the melody of the uh, of uh, of what the song becomes. It's it's great and just to how he plays it and at his advanced age, how still he's good and how the, these two guys who are who are 
you know, just huge in their own right. Look at him like the way we would look at him. You know, they, yeah. just like, like, you know, you're looking at a legend. Oh yeah. That's why Tom Morello is playing with Bruce. Cause like he says, every time I stand on stage with Bruce, he goes, I'm playing with rock, a rock God every night. How can I not enjoy my job? Exactly. You know? This was fun. This was, I'm, listen, this was a show I've wanted to do like for the longest time. And I'm glad we really got a chance to do this. Me too. Me too. We have a bunch of cool shows coming up, uh, going a different direction with some of them. We're going to have some singers from uh, 90s and 2000s bands. Uh, no more drummers. We're not doing drummers anymore. Fuck drummers. Okay. Uh, cooking shows. What's that? Cooking shows. No more cooking shows. Yeah, no that that one should be released by the time this is out. Right, Adam? Maybe. Yep. Yep. That'll be up. <laughs> There he is. Anyway, we're, no, listen, we're, uh, we are back on the same page in the show, and uh, I think we're going to have some of our best ones coming up yet. I, I think so, too. And also, um, just a shout out, man. Uh, we were at uh, Mammoth Dirty Honey the other night. Yes. And just to, to see those two bands in a place like Stalland Ballroom mm-hmm. was, was just like amazing. So I got to, I got to really thank you very much for the hookup for the tickets on that. Oh God. Yeah. It was my pleasure. That, it, was, that was, it was a great show and they are the future of rock and roll. So those two bands. Dirty honey is they, they will be playing PNC the next time they come around. Yeah. And I hope you, now you understand why my hatred for Greta Van Fleet is so deep after you've seen dirty honey. Cause that's how the band should sound like. No, no, no. Greta Van Fleet. We, we got to go see Greta Van Fleet. When they come you're, you're, the you would get me to open for you before I ever go see Greta Van Fleet. Come on. What? How can you be this so, so stubborn, not at least trying to check? Them I out? don't like them. I, and let me tell you something. There's a lot of people who can't stand that band. A lot of people like them, too, though. My it's friend, subjective. My friend Seymour was at the at the Dirty Honey show, and he nailed it. Why people love Dirty Honey? They are this generation's Aerosmith. The Aerosmith are the Black Crows. They're right. A little so bit here's of the deal. So now you have older people our age who love Aerosmith, and they hear this, and they're like, "Wow, this is fucking great! I really dig this." And these kids are young. I'm gonna go check them out. And then you have the other generation who is the young generation who is like into rock and roll in their early teens, late teens, early twenties, who finds this band, and then their older brothers or their fathers get to listen to it with them, who are our age, and they're like. Okay, this is a band that I can go see with my kid because we both like them. You know what the problem is? There is no outlet. There is no place for people who are younger to try to discover new music and discover a band like this. Oh, I think you're a hundred percent wrong with that. Tell me where, uh, uh, dude. Let me tell you one. I will tell you one place right now. Apple Music. I I fought this, but for- you have to actively go out and no, seek it. No, you don't. Here's what. Here's why. I fought Apple Music because I am one of those people who has to have a physical copy of everything, whether it's digital or CD or whatever. Apple Music, you just pick and it just stays in the cloud. So like if I'm listening to Shinedown, okay, just picking a band out at random, if I'm listening to Shinedown and the last song I play is a Shinedown song off the record, it doesn't stop playing. Apple Music kicks in and plays songs that are in this genre of Shinedown. Now, they might be bands that you know, like Three uh, Three Days Grace or uh, you know Theory of a Dead Man, things like that. I have found more music in the past week from bands I have never heard of that are fucking out of this world, rock bands. And these are albums that came out three, four, five, and six years ago that I have never heard before, all because of Apple Music. Because I it, think, I it think most people, things. I think most people put on the radio. I think a lot, I don't think as many people as yeah. we know, know have uh, XM radio, but I think people do listen to serious XM radio. But I think traditionally people still listen to regular FM radio and I don't think anybody listens to FM radio. And um, this is where we differ. No one listens to FM radio. No, they do. No, they don't. No, there's not one. The only people who listen to FM radio is when they're driving in an area where Sirius isn't kicking in. They're not listening to that. FM radio is completely dead. 
It is dead as a doornail. And that's why things like Apple Music and Spotify and iHeartRadio and all these and serious, all these outlets are just gigantic for these artists, even though they're getting paid shit. I I wish there was like a real music channel, you know, a, a, a video music channel like the way MTV was in the 80s to really break some of these bands. I mean, it's YouTube. That's it. I mean, YouTube is, I mean, they still, people still make music videos. You don't realize that people are still putting out videos all the time. It just goes right to YouTube. That's the thing. So you got to actively search it out. Whereas right. like for me, I'll put on Apple music at 10 o'clock in the morning and I'll let it play straight through. And there's a lot of garbage. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stuff, but I'm telling you, I have found easily 15 or 20 bands in the last week and a half, two weeks that I have never heard of that are just I, monsters. I have been talking up dirty honey and trying to spread it to as many young people as I know. Mm -hmm. And just like, I really want to see this band, like make it. They're I mean, going to they, be big. And I think the next mammoth record is going to be pretty big too. And considering that that kid played every instrument and sang on that record, that it took him like six years to write it and, and record it. The next one, he's using the full band to do it. The kid's got chops, man. The kid has chops. He has three guitar players who play on stage with him. He did it as a three piece the other night. You couldn't tell that he was playing three lines. That's how solid of a musician this kid is. Yeah, he was good. He really he was. was. He was good. And it was, it was better seeing them in a club than at Giant Stadium. Yeah, opening for Guns N' Roses. I think it kind of lose the effect a little bit, you know, because I don't think they're nowhere near that level yet of playing a monster stadium. But in that small venue. It's also, he's also not like a, a showman, really. No, he's just a musician. You know, yeah. and he, he look, they, Dirty they, Honey put on a show. Those guys, yes, are rock they, stars. they they are rock. That's the difference. They are rock stars. You're absolutely right. They come out. They're dressed to the fucking nines. They have the seventies clothes on. He's holding the freaking mic stand like Robert Plant. I mean, it, 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 they were fantastic. You, you know, it'd be a great double bill. Dirty Honey and the Struts. I'm not a fan of the Struts. Oh man, see, I love them. I would I rather see Dirty band. Honey and I'd rather see Dirty Honey and Rival Sons together than I would. I can see Struts. that. Together too. I'm glad that they're playing with Greta Van Fleet. I'm not. I would leave right after Rival Sons. I wouldn't stay for one Greta Van Fleet song. That's yeah, like when I when I bought tickets. Talk. I bought tickets to see a Tribe Called Quest open up for Kanye West. You didn't okay. stay for Kanye. Eighty percent of Madison Square Garden didn't stay for. Get out of here! I, I am, when no I'm, first of all, it was Tribe's last show ever. They announced it as their last show ever. I'm not being, I'm not lying to you when I say at a minimum 65, 70% of that place left after Tribe Called Quest was done. That's stupid. I would have stayed. At least no. for some of it. No. Kind of is not bad. Okay. So, anyway, thank you for watching uh, this episode of Who's Your Band? Because Jeffrey Paul apparently just had a fucking stroke in the middle of talking. So, anywho, and don't uh, gold digger. I like run this town. Uh, please subscribe to the podcast. Um, we have no guests to plug anything. So uh, thank you. And uh, we will see you next week. Take care. Maybe, maybe with my new co-host. I'm not sure yet. Take care. Later.